Hey everyone, welcome to a very, very personal episode of Odd Rob. During World War II, my grandfather, Second Lieutenant Marlon S. Fuller, was the bombardier navigator of a B-24J Liberator in the 778th Bomber Group. While on a mission near Munich, his plane was hit by enemy fire. As his bomber fell from the sky, he and several of the other crew members were able to parachute from the plane. Unfortunately, he landed in a tree and severely hurt his leg in the process. Before being able to free himself, he was captured by the SS and eventually ended up as a POW for the last six months of the war. Those last six months were spent here at Stalag Luftstrie in Zagan, Poland. I invite you to share this visit with me as we explore where Stalag Luftstrie once stood. I hope to get at least a small sense of what my grandfather went through to possibly walk where he walked. Maybe even if I can find out the barracks he stayed in, actually stand where that barracks stood. All right, come on, let's go in, shall we? It would have been the exit. Yes. And this is the tunnel. And this is the tunnel that goes all the way over. There is actually where one of the guard towers stood with the open area here. And the tunnel continues on, you can see. The Tunnel Harry was one of three tunnels which were built as part of the preparations for the Great Escape. The entrance to the tunnel was in the sleeping part of hut number 104 under an iron stove. The work started on 11 April 1943. It had been planned that it would lead towards the north. It was Harry that was actually used for the escape on the night of 24-25 March 1944. The tunnel was 111 meters long and about 10 meters below the ground. At the bottom of the shaft, there was a room with the air pump, excavated sand storage and carpenter workshop. Along the tunnel, there were also two wider chambers, so-called halfway stations. These are from the movie, The Great Escape with Steve McQueen. These are some of the actual POWs. So this right here, that's a plaque where um, Air Commodore Charles Clark was a POW here. Hut 104 was built by personnel from the Royal Air Force, British Army, and Royal Navy. And uh, that was uh, between the 3rd and 16th of August, 2008. It's pretty amazing. So one of the men that was actually here, he supervised and got together and built directly from his knowledge this barracks. So this is the memorial for all those that suffered and perished here at Stalag Luft Street. It, um, seeing this memorial really uh, brings home what uh, my grandfather may have endured. And uh, I'm really honored to be the uh, only one in the family to have uh, come here.
and try to get an idea of what he may have gone through. He, I remember as a child, he wouldn't talk. He wouldn't talk about his time in the military. He didn't tell me anything until I became, once I got out of basic training, uh, he and I would talk all the time and he told me some of his experiences and shared with me. But I remember when I was a child, before going into the military, I remember the only time that he would ever laugh, he'd smile during Yankee games. He loved the Yankees, but he would only laugh at Hogan's heroes. Believe it or not, I guess that was a different side that balanced out, overcame, was able to laugh, laugh at. And that's how I became a big fan of Hogan's Heroes. Anyway, I am truly humbled and honored to see what my grandfather had gone through and being here, just sensing a little bit of what he endured. This is an experience that has touched me deeply, not only as his grandson, but as a fellow vet. Thank you, Grandpa, for all the sacrifices that you made, as well as all the others for our freedom. If you ever get a chance to visit Stalag Luft Sri, just for the experience to get a sense, to touch what's here out in the woods, the tunnels and the, what's left of the barracks out there, uh, it's definitely worth it. So signing off from, uh, from Zagen, Poland here at Stalag Luft Sri. Stay safe, stay well, stay odd.